I should have waited till I was done filming this to take a shit ton of NyQuil. Hello everyone, it is Illy back with that bookish content. At least since you know, I'm a pro booktuber now. I got my certificate in the mail. Um, I was like, hey, time to do those wrap ups. So I was like, yo, I can, you know, just do monthly wrap ups. That's the usual, it's the smart thing to do, keep it in check or whatever. But um, my reading this year has taken a toll, basically. For the first 10 days of January, I did not read a single thing. Not one page, not one word. Nothing. And then midway through January, I got really into Stray Kids, and then that took up a lot of my time. And then very end of um, January into that very beginning of February. It's February 11th as I'm filming this. And so, like, that whole period, my mental health um, took a... Just went going downhill, baby. Love it. And then just other general life shit I'm trying to figure out, get a handle on. So my reading just mm -hmm, hasn't been doing so great this year so far, so far. So I kind of missed my mark to do like a January wrap up because the beginning of February and into January wasn't like a mess and shit. So I was like, I still want to do wrap up because I just want to keep track of shit. And um... Basically, I'm gonna, every time, 10 books I read, gonna, that's my wrap up, every 10. Make sense? Am I wording shit? Um, read 10 books so far this year, February 11th, that is my first wrap up, books 1 through 10. Let's just get it. First thing I read was a comic bind up volume 1 issue, things, it was Werewolf by Night by... Don't know. It was just a bunch of the comics volume binded up into one volume. It was, it was all right. Like I mean, I just didn't really care. I don't really care those stories. It wasn't like oh my god, phenomenal. If I was like a big werewolf fan, maybe I'd love it. If it was a big Marvel, is it Marvel? Was it DC? It was Marvel. If I was a big Marvel fan, maybe I'd love it. No, was it DC? No, it was it was Marvel because I think Spider Man was in there. Oh yeah. Um, Spider Man. There was one issue with Spider Man in it, and that was really cool. I like that. I'm a big, I like, Spider-Man. I gave it, like, a 2.5 stars. I don't know what to tell you about a boy whose father was a werewolf, so he became a werewolf. He got the curse, and then it was just him being a werewolf at every full moon. The second book I read is Darius the Great is Not Okay by Adib Kuram. This, ooh, bitch, I give this a 4.5. I talked about this when I hauled it, kind of. It's, like, subtle, very subtle LGBT, basically about a half-Persian boy who is dealing with not fitting in in America in his school within his own family unit and then he has to go to Iran when his grandfather is very sick and basically him not feeling like he belongs there like he's not really a part of the family and he's also dealing with mental illness and how that takes a toll on his relationship with his father and just his identity I love this this was again 4.5 stars this was so good it just dealt with so many different issues and topics and it did it so beautifully everything was very cohesive I mean I I think I loved it so much because I saw so much of my own experiences within this growing up mixed race and with mental illnesses and queer and just feeling different feeling like you don't belong anywhere that you're not enough of one thing or the other and it just it's a it's like you talked about like you know familial issues mental illness just being comfortable with yourself and I real I just I think it did it so well but I think this the, the thing that kind of united all of the different aspects was this overwhelming feeling of being ashamed ashamed of who you are of why you are a certain way like with his medication he felt like he was ashamed, like he was letting his father down, like he was letting, he was disappointing his Persian family because he's not a strong man and just so many, and like not being fit, not playing soccer, not speaking their their native language. It just explored being a stranger to your own family. And I, I related so deeply to this because I am, you know, I'm mixed race. I have mental illnesses. I take medication for that. And I've... I felt that shift. I felt when I am with my father's side of the family, which are all Mexican, and when they're speaking Spanish, and I tried so hard to fit in with the white kids where I just 
was like, oh, I don't, I like rejected that so much. I feel like I can't be a part of that anymore. And Darius just was a character I could relate to very, very deeply. I loved it so much. Also the afterward in here, oh, a bitch sobbed. Oh my God, afterwards and like acknowledgements are always like, oh, that show always makes me cry. This was just very, very beautiful. I loved everything I had to say. The next book I read was Dolores Claiborne by Stephen King. Um, this is my first Stephen King of the year. I've watched this movie many, many times. What did I give this? I have my goodies open. I could look. I think I gave it a two star. Yeah, it was two star. I didn't need to click on it. So this is about a lady who they try to pin murder on for the lady she, like, used to work at, used to, like, be her maid, and then she became, like, her caretaker when she was older and dying and shit and she falls and dies and shit and they're trying to blame it on her but really it's because they're just trying to pin her husband's murder on her and it's just her being like mm -hmm. i didn't kill that lady but i did kill my husband listen up and like it's f and like it's fine i like i think i like the movie more because um kathy bates a queen but i don't know there's just a lot of it there's a thing that happened in here that like, explains really why she did what she did to her husband when she killed him and us uh, i just feel like stephen king does this thing a lot where he'll throw in an offensive or something that's very sensitive and sometimes he goes about that and you're like oh wow that's very eye-opening that's very like oh shit like crazy hard shit to read and other times it just feels like he put it in there and he's not really exploring it deeply he's just using it and i'm like can that's a little triggering that's a little can you maybe why do you do this? You'll see that later as another Stephen King. But this was just, it was just, it was fine. It was cool, fine, you know, whatever. Am I so good at doing reviews? Am I supposed to be doing reviews? Wrap up, it's just me telling you what books I read and what I thought of them, right? I don't need to be like in depth. I'm inarticulate as fuck. Anyway, next read is Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. I have a whole review on this sci-fi, adult sci-fi. Um, I thought it was phenomenal. I gave it like a 5, 4.75. I don't even know. I think it's a 5. It was one of the most brilliant, well thought out sci-fi books I have ever read, and especially in a standalone sci-fi. Honestly, it was just phenomenal. Please read it. Next, I read Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Dion. This is a sapphic fantasy novel that deals with sexual abuse and abuse in power and family and identity and it is so good it was so beautiful basically um do i have to tell you what this book is about everybody knows what this book is about right right i don't know how to do summaries basically i just fucking love this i had that romance I knew who the love interest was gonna be I was like oh my god it's her and it was her and I was like thank you god I really enjoyed the way it went about the very difficult subject matter um there was some lines in here that just made me like sob oh my god our main character Ooh, what a great main character um the only issue with this I gave it a five stars Listen, the issue, I think there was a little couple, like, pacing issues. There's little things where, like, I feel like she would repeat herself. And I'm like, that was necessary. And there was just things that I was like, mm. So, it wasn't, like, a perfect movie. It was more like a 4.5. But I give a books like this the full five stars. Like, I, because I think that's what it deserves. I think it needs higher praise. It needs to be, and it deserves that higher praise. Because stories like this are so, so important. They like, own voice of stories like this. And I, I adored it. I loved it. It was beautiful. It made me cry. I mean, I cry on everything, but still. Very difficult book to get through. It points and to see some of the struggles and some of the very dark things that is going on. But, um, but I, I just, I adored it. It was so good. Next was a reread, and that was The Sea Floor by Cornelia Funke. Funke, 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 Funke. Still can't say it, apparently. Sue me. Um, this is just like a middle grade fantasy child children's, it's middle grade I think, about two runaway boys and their little gang of friends and I mean it's cute, it's fine. I read this originally in like the second grade or the first grade that um, there's some shit in here I was like ooh that's a little offensive. I don't remember when this was written, like 2000, early 2003 is when it won the award. So I was like whoa I didn't realize that was in there. It was fine though, I think I gave it like a three star. Yeah, three star. It's fun. It's it's cool. The next book I read was Dreamland by Sarah Dessen. This um Sarah Dessen is an author that my mother like got really into like 
10 years back or something when she was trying to go through her YA phase very late in life. Um, I had read a couple things by her, and I just, it was the, you know, generic YA contemporary white hetero shit going on. I just didn't really care. This, again, I gave it like a two star. It was like whatever. It was basically about a girl whose sister runs off instead of going to college. She's like the perfect student, perfect child, everything. And that her missing and her like fucking up her life, the effects it had on her younger sister, and then how she gets into like drugs. They talk about drug abuse. It's weed. She, they're fucking smoking weed. That's not a fucking drug. Um, basically that, and then, like she's in an abusive relationship, and she can't leave, and all this stuff. She's scared to talk about it, um, and just how you know that affects her and shit. I will give Sarah some props for the way she handled that relationship and the um, and the abuse and all that. It very much did not read very gimmicky. It didn't try to romanticize the boy or the relationship or what or try to make what he was doing okay like obviously the main character rationalized tried to rationalize herself throughout the whole thing and i think that was a really cool exploration i think that was a very honest exploration because a lot of people in those situations they're scared to leave or they make excuses why they can't and she was still not young she was like 16 so that was all right that was fine i didn't just, i just didn't really care for the story it was very just generic the writing wasn't anything spectacular it was two star rate overall next is fucking awful terrible app people by Stephen King this why my whole review is just why why was this written why so this I I didn't know what this would be about going in I mean you can kind of guess basically it's just about like this 12 year old boy or something who's like obsessed with World War II and Hitler and the Nazis and he finds still Nazi living in his like neighborhood and then he like blackmails him into telling him all the disgusting and awful things he did while he was a Nazi and under like Hitler's regime and reign and all this shit and it was so awful okay at the beginning so I thought I was gonna go into this crazy like in-depth thing about Nazis and Hitler and World War II and how awful and crazy that shit is and like I thought I was gonna explore that right and like okay he's telling us all this awful gross shit for a reason like he's gonna turn something around no Halfway through this book, it, like, skips when they're older and all this shit that's, like, them and, like, they're killing fucking random hobos and shit. It, the, first off, the first half and the second half, like, did not correlate whatsoever. Besides just having the same characters, it just, they were not the same story. It just didn't make any sense what was going on, why. And Stephen King does this thing where, I, I mentioned earlier, he'll write offensive shit and be like, well, I grew up during this era, or I lived here, or I'm just showing this, and try to pass off as, like, okay, that does not give you an excuse to say certain things or do or write certain things. Like, no, I'm sorry. And especially if you're not even trying to prove a point, you're just saying it to be fucking offensive. Like, I'm sorry, no. And he, it get, it turns into, like, softcore porn where it's, like, everybody is just, like, oh, yeah, sex, and or they're just talking about it. It's very vulgar and shit. And I'm, like, you're not adding anything to it. I get it, random sex scene, around this, or if you're using it, for a reason, but no, it's just been like, oh yeah, like, I'm a man, and I'm like, what was the point? What was the point of this? Rather than being like, just trying to be like, shock factor, be like, ooh, like, like you didn't prove anything, Stephen King. Just because you're phenomenal and all that shit, you know, all this fucking high praise, and I might have like, a hundred other books of yours behind me, and I'm gonna read them, doesn't mean you can say and write whatever you want, like, fuck off, you fucking white old man. I actually think Stephen King is pretty cool. Sometimes, I do wonder, when like, I reach like this, and I'm like, okay, is he sane? Like, which which is his real personality? Not like his books are all about him and his personality, but like, do you? But which what do you believe? What are you? Where are your thoughts lie? Where is your beliefs? Um. Then next, I finally got to *Renegade* by Marissa Meyer. This is a superhero story with like villains and superheroes and them and the villains infiltrating the superheroes and everybody just trying to take down everybody for the greater good of society. This um. I obviously wonder because I love Marissa Meyer. I loved Luna Chronicle. That was such trash. I liked Heartless. So I was like, I definitely was like, oh yeah, I totally want to read this. It took me forever to finally get to it. But I did get to it. It was, it was, it was good. Um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it enough to where I would want to pick up the sequel. Um, do y'all know what this is about? Everybody knows what this is about, right? Do I get to give you the opposites? Um, I gave it like a 3.5, oh, um, Act People, I gave it a 1 star, fuck that shit, um, I gave this like a 3.5, 4 star, I'm not sure if it's the full 4 star yet, there were elements of it that I did enjoy, I mean, I was very intrigued throughout it, there was like things I was like, mm, like I just didn't really care too, too much, um, 
my one thing is like the relationship that was building and going on like I feel like in stories like this like that stuff's not necessary I feel like they do it a lot because that's what the people want and shit um I could have done without it but I understand why she did it like and I like that the whole story didn't necessarily fully revolve around the relationship but I get it like because you didn't one of our main characters know but it shows her inner turmoil and like why she's so torn about certain things and that I think it had a lot to say about good and evil like, and what it really means for like the greater good of society and um and power that was kind of interesting it was fine but um yeah it was all right I do want to pick up the sequel though the last one the final book book 10 on the come up by Andy Thomas uh, this deserves its own fucking review. Ooh. Ooh. And this is my first, like, 2019 release that I've read this year. This was beautiful, phenomenal, what we all expect from Andy Thomas. I don't think Andy Thomas is capable of writing anything less than amazing. And even, I mean, I doubt she could ever write anything less than amazing, but I'd still pick up everything she ever writes. Um, this is basically, like, about a year after everything that took place in The Hate You Give, and... It's in the same community, neighborhood, town sort of area, Garden Heights and all that shit. But this follows our, our main character, Bree. She's 16 and she wants to be a rapper. Her father was a rapper. He died. And it's just about her community and her learning how to achieve those goals and learning what it means to be successful, what it means to be authentic to yourself and your family and doing what's right. And just, I don't know, there's just a lot of elements. And, and, you know, it's talked about some very important, heavy topics that are very relevant to us now in, our, in society now and shit. It's like, hey, you give with, like, police brutality, drugs, gangs, um, racial profiling. There was a lot of oh, misogyny big in this because hip-hop played a huge, huge role in this. And I love that aspect because I grew up on, like, gangster rap. I don't really know it. So we got like Tupac and Biggie and Snoop and Dr. Dre and W.A. Like I grew up with that music. So like when they're like when she's rapping um, to certain beats and I'm like, oh shit, I can hear this. Like I know the song. So that was really, really interesting. This, um, I cried, of course, especially reading her acknowledgments and shit. I just, I love Angie Thomas because she writes about real shit. But the thing is, what stands out the most about Angie Thomas's books and stories are her characters. They are some of the most real people I have ever read about. The way they talk, sometimes you read books, and it doesn't matter if it is a POC author or not, a lot of the time, the characters come across very, like, they're talking, talking like, slang and certain shit. It sounds very, like, fake and gimmicky and, like, over-exaggerated for the story and for the characters, but her character is so real. I love the family aspect. I love the friendship aspect. I love... Oh, I just... I, ad I adored everything about this. I loved what it had to say about being who you are. All of her stories are about empowering yourself from within, from seeing what makes you different from other people and how that makes you powerful, how that makes how who you are and where you come from is all a part of you. But it's not everything. It doesn't make you that you can take those things and still do more and do better. And just because you are black just because you live in a terrible community doesn't mean you can't achieve your dreams and like you are bigger than your circumstances am i talk i don't even think i'm talking i'm saying what i need to be saying about this book because i'm so awful at speaking this i don't know this is just a very important book um obviously if you're i don't know why anybody would not want be wanting to pick this up this everybody should want to read this everybody should already be like on it but like obviously this is the book everybody should read i think it's so important oh andy thomas what a blessing i loved this i just relate so deeply to her characters i am not black but i am mexican and like i see so much of myself in these characters especially like with where i grow up and shit like like my neighborhood isn't like necessarily a bad neighborhood but like every neighborhood down here is a bad neighborhood, but, like, two streets down, you have, like, the projects, and then, like, right there is the train tracks, and we don't go to the east side. The east side's the bad side of town, even though it's just, like, the worst. The less good. I don't know how to explain it. It's just, I just love her stories. They're so important, and they're so personal, and they just read so authentic. And I, just, and I love her characters. I just love every little thing about these books. It's just 
you see so much of her in it and it's just oh like just read it pick it up and buy it please these stories are so important and we need to show publishers we need to show everybody that we want these stories and that they're so needed and necessary and just obviously oh, like, i got five stars okay if i rambled too much and like didn't even explain shit and talk about shit but those are the 10 books i've read so far in 2019 how's your reading going did you read any of these books have you read any of these books um i'll see you in another video at some point